Good morning. I'm just so excited to see everyone here this morning. It's so great to see your faces and uh, all of those who are guests this morning. We are so grateful that you have joined with us today. We have so many that have uh, been away for a little while and have come back, and we're just so glad to see you. It's great that we can be together today. What are some of your fears? We all have them. They just are in different forms. There's fear of water, fear of failure, fear of spiders, fear of financial loss, fear of sickness or, or death, fear of heights or public speaking, fear of snakes. <laughs> Fear of being left alone. We name, we define, we categorize, we study all these fears. We call them phobias. But why? I think it is because fear, if left unchecked in our lives, impedes us. It prevents us from living as how we want to live. For example, how many here have a fear of spiders? Raise your hand. All right, so fear of spiders, fear of snakes. Okay, you can, all right, all right. Let's just say that before you all got here, I released some 100 spiders and a couple, say 20 snakes in the auditorium. Now, how many of you who have that fear would be able to listen to the rest of my sermon? Probably not, right? Because you're, you're, you're fearful. Where, where is that spider? Where is that? Is, is it coming up here? You're going to freeze. You're going to be impeded from doing what you wanted to do because of your fear. The same is true in our spiritual life. Fears can hold us back, can hinder us from living the life that God wants us to live, from being the kind of person that God wants us to be. And so that's why faith is so important. Because faith counteracts the fear that we have in our lives. And so this morning, I want us to just sort of look at ourselves and evaluate ourselves and to, to see, are we of fear or are we of faith? And I want us to sort of get a little bit of a foundation with these, these two terms, because in one sense, these are really contradictions, and yet they are the same. I want you to think about that for just a moment. They are, it, let's just take the definitions. Fear is the inverse of faith. Fear, defined by the Oxford Dictionary, is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. We all get that, that idea, that's that unpleasant emotion that's caused by that belief of, I, I, I'm, I, could, I could be in danger, I could feel pain. Faith, on the other hand, is complete trust or confidence in someone or something in a particular situation. Now, fear arises from uncertainty, doubt, and worry. Faith is anchored in assurance, confidence, and truth. These two concepts counteract or contradict or even maybe we might say undo each other. If you have more of one, you have less of the other. And the inverse is true. If you have more, we'll say if you have more fear, you have less faith. 
For example, let's say you have a little child, and they are standing on the edge of the deep end of a pool. They have a fear of water. Their parents say, go ahead, just jump in, you're okay. But their fear holds them back. They are impeded because of that fear. Versus if their father is in the deep end of the pool with arms outstretched and says, jump, I will catch you. The child has faith in their father and overcomes the fear and jumps in the pool because faith was greater than their fear. In our spiritual life, Fear and faith really come down to a contrast of belief versus unbelief. We're told in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 that faith is the assurance of things we hope for. The certainty or the conviction of things we cannot see. That there is a complete trust in who God is And that he is constantly working in our lives for our best interest. Even though we can't tangibly see that sometimes. But spiritually, the emotion of fear comes in when there is unbelief or maybe a weak belief in our lives. That that unbelief or lack of trust gains a foothold in our thoughts. And then the emotion of fear takes hold and hinders our spiritual growth. Faith and fear are opposing forces. One person said it this way. Faith is constructive. Fear is destructive. Faith is grounded in truth. Fear is grounded in lies. Faith is based upon the promises of God. Fear is based on the deceptive lies of Satan. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Fear comes by hearing the lies of Satan. I want you to think about that. And the differences that are there, the contradiction between faith and fear. And yet at the same time, there is a similarity that they are both tied to the same thing. And that is that they are both based on the same situation. Things unseen in our future. Let's go back to our spider example. What is it that you are really fearful of? With the spiders or the snakes. It's what's going to happen in the future with that spider or with that snake. Are they going to bite me? That's that's what we're fearful of, of what is going to happen. But faith is based upon that same idea of what is going to happen, not the present. If you had the knowledge of what that spider was going to do, or if you just saw that, oh, well, hey, that's a a daddy long legs. It's not going to bite me. I'm okay. I've got this. You wouldn't be fearful. You also wouldn't need faith because you could see. You could have the knowledge of understanding. Faith is what we need when we have to go beyond things that are unseen in our future. Just the same way as as fear is tied to that same idea. Say, okay, well, why is all of that important to have that kind of a foundation? Because of this. Having faith in God does not mean a person will never experience the debilitating effects of fear, especially when unsettling circumstances in life come. I want you to understand that. Just because you have faith does not mean you won't experience fear. Case in point is Peter. If you will, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. Matthew, chapter 14. 
And as you're turning there, let me give you the context of what we are about to read. Jesus has just fed the 5,000, or over 5,000 people, with just a few loaves of bread and, and fish, a few fish. The disciples have seen this. And John's account tells us that the people, after being fed, now want to take Jesus by force and make him king. Jesus, understanding this, immediately puts his disciples in a boat. He makes them get into the boat and says, get across to the other side. He then either withdraws or slips away somehow because all these people here are wanting to take him by force and make him king. He removes himself and goes up onto the mountains to pray. The disciples begin to row out into the Sea of Galilee. John says they have been rowing three, four miles. And there's a strong wind that comes up on, upon the sea, making it very difficult to cross. Now, it is not, it's not just evening now, it is now night. And these disciples have been rowing and rowing and rowing, trying to get across the sea. And it says that in the fourth watch, that is between 3 and 6 a.m., that's the fourth watch of the night. So we're talking middle of the night. They've been rowing all night long, trying to get across the sea. It says that Jesus comes to them now walking on the water. Right? Get, that, get that picture in your mind. Keep in mind, middle of the night, very few lights. That's usually when we are most prone to fear. Is it not? You hear a creaking in your house. And you're like, what, what is that in the middle of the night? What, what is it? You wake up in the morning. It's like, oh, that was just a tree branch scraping across the window. We all do that. Fear jumps upon us in the middle of the night. That's where these disciples are. Now notice, let's pick up the reading then. There in verse 25. Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are certainly God's son. Now, I want us to think about this for just a few moments. Peter hears Jesus say, Don't be afraid. It is I. He would have known the voice of Jesus. They'd been with him long enough to recognize the voice. But Peter wants greater assurance. Notice what Peter says. Peter doesn't say, Lord, if it's you, let me come swim to you. He doesn't say that. He says, if it is you, Lord, let me come to you, as in, let me come and do the same thing that you are doing. Let me walk on the water. And Jesus says, come, come on. Peter gets out of the boat. Can you picture that? 
takes one step outside the boat. He's, he's probably halfway in, halfway out. Keep in mind, the boat is doing this. The waves are, are crashing. The, the, the wind has not stopped. It, 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 it is tumultuous sea. So he's, he's halfway in, halfway out. He then takes the next step. I'm not sinking. The next step for him is to let go of the boat. Can you imagine what he's thinking? He takes the next step and the next step. And it seems by, by the, the accounts here that he, he goes out for some, some distance. It's not like he's right there by the boat to where he can go, oh, I'm sinking, oh, I got the boat, I, I'm good. Okay, that's not what's happening here. He has gone out some distance away from the boat. But then Matthew says, but seeing the wind. Think about that, that phrase, seeing the wind. You can't see the wind. You can see the effects of the wind. And I think that's the idea. The, the, the literal is he saw the, the, the boisterous wind, the, 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 the force of the wind, the waves coming up and crashing down over and over, the howling of the wind. He, he witnesses all of that. He is looking at what might happen. Things unseen in his future. And it says that his faith fails. And fear takes over. There's the inverse. The law of gravity that has been suspended now is no longer suspended. And he begins to sink. Peter's life is not in danger by the violent wind or the raging waves. It's in danger by what Jesus says. He says, you have little faith. Now, it's not that Peter didn't trust that Jesus was the Messiah. That's not the issue. What it is that in the moment, Peter's belief in the uncertainty of his surroundings was greater than his trust in the Lord. One was greater than the other. And yet, even in his failure, Peter cries out to the one who can save him. He doesn't try to swim back. I mean, come on, Peter's been around the Sea of Galilee all of his life. He's a fisherman by, by trade i got to think he could swim. But he doesn't try to do that. He, he is so overcome. He says, Lord, save me. You know the most beautiful thing about all that? Is despite his failures, Jesus saves him. Jesus doesn't say, hey, Peter, you got yourself into this. You better get yourself out. Now, why do I make that point? Because that is so true for all of us, right? We're like Peter. How many times have we failed? And Jesus doesn't say, eh, sink or swim, you figure it out. No, he is right there with a hand. He is right there at that moment. And do you realize what happens next? Peter and Jesus are again walking on the water. Peter gets to do that twice. One by himself. One walking with Jesus. There's going to be a whole lot of things I want to ask Peter when we get to heaven, but well, that's going to be one of them. What was that like? And it says then they, they come together and then they get into the boat. Peter doesn't cast, or Jesus doesn't cast Peter off. Even because he failed in his faith. Well, what does that mean for us? How do we overcome our fear? The easy answer? Yeah, say, oh, well, you just got to have more faith. But how do we do that on a day-to-day -day basis? 
especially when the world continually pulls us down into uncertainty and fear and lies. I think it starts with the truth that Paul writes in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Do you see the truth there? God did not give us a spirit of fear, but just the opposite. Our faith is based on knowing our Almighty Father. Knowing the truth about His power, His love, His self-control, that which is His character. And all of that He gives us, He gives that to us, so that we can overcome the lies of Satan. Our faith, our trust, is anchored on the truth that God loves you and that He continually is seeking your deepest needs. Over and over, that is what the Bible tells us. That's what God is doing. That's what He wants to do for you. And our faith grows by experiencing more of God. Experiencing not just an understanding of who he is and his nature, but, but, but seeing how he is changing us to become more like him. That's what he wants. He wants to give us his nature so that we don't have to ever fear. And the more that we trust in God who is true, the less we fear Satan's lies. The more that I come to understand the true reality of which that which is real, that which is God, I get to pull back the curtain that Satan is wanting to keep over my eyes. That which says, you're worthless. You don't matter. You don't, nobody cares about you. All of that is Satan's lies. God's saying, I do care. I care so much I sent my son to die for you. What it does is that faith says, God sustain me in the past. He'll carry me through today. And he will uphold me in the future. I can look back to my past and see where God has been my rock. And that gives me the strength to look not only to the present, but to look to the future and say, you know what? He's done it. He's doing it now. So he's going to do it again. He will always do that. That does not change with God. And we can anchor ourselves in that trust. But what that means is that we must pursue greater faith. God understands our weaknesses and that there will be times where we have times of fear while we still have some faith. David himself in Psalm 56 and verse 3 says, when I am afraid, he's not saying I don't have any fear. He's admitting I have fear. But notice what he says next. He says, I put my trust in you. When I'm not to that perfect place, which we all are not there yet. I have that, that trust in God, but yet if there's something in my life that is causing fear, he says, I trust God. I continually turn back to him as my rock. But we cannot let our trust become stagnant. There's never a moment that we can say, you know what? I've got, a, I've got enough trust in God. I don't need any more. I think I'm good. I'm just going to stay right here. God calls us to greater and greater spiritual growth. Our faith is to move us forward 
to become more like him. Do you realize that's actually what we just sang in Oceans? Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. He's saying, I don't want to live a life where I am boxed in in my trust for God. Break it open. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me. I don't have to have a, a, a straight path, Lord. You tell me where to go. You lead. I'll follow. Take me deeper than my faith, my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger. Where? In the presence of my Savior. We all just sang that. Did you mean it? I hope we all did. Because that is the essence of expanding our trust. We experience more of God when we get out of our comfort zones. Jesus, throughout his ministry with his disciples, he was continually nudging his disciples to get further and further out of their comfort zone. We see it with the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus says, you have the people sit down and you go serve them. Jesus never turned it around and he never said, hey, can we get, I don't know, 100 people to, 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 to serve us and, and, and the, the disciples are going to sit over here. You serve them. You serve me first and then you serve the disciples. That's not what Jesus says. He has the people sit down and he has the, the, the disciples go and serve them. The disciples are the ones who've been with Jesus. They should say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You serve us. Jesus is nudging them out of their comfort zone. And Peter is getting out of his comfort zone as he steps out onto that sea. You know why I know that? Because the 11 other disciples are stuck in their comfort zone inside the boat. Peter's the only one who says, I'll get outside it. I'll break out of my comfort zone. I'll break out of what feels right and easy and secure, and I'll go out trusting in who you are, Jesus. He is trusting in the power of who Jesus is and what he can do. And even when Peter fails, he immediately comes right back to Jesus and says, save me. Now let's apply this to us. What does that mean? It applies in every aspect of our lives. It applies to marriage. If you are sitting there right now and you're saying, I am in fear because my marriage is not what I intended it to be. It's not what I wanted it to be. Or is it that you're saying, you know, it may not be what it wants to be, but I'm, I'm relying in trust upon God. That he has a plan for my marriage and I'm going to seek him so that he can bring about his will. It applies to forgiveness. Maybe you're sitting there in fear saying, someone has done something to me that is unforgivable. And I, in fear, I'm fearful that they won't get paid back. And so I'm not going to forgive them. Or do you, in faith, say, you know what? God is the one who will avenge. My job is to trust him and let go and forgive. Maybe it's as something as just as simple as your job right now. Maybe you're fearful. Maybe you've lost your job. Greg and I were talking about that this week. How Greg's been in that situation for a couple of, of months where he lost his job and, and, and fear could have overcome him. And he could say, I don't know what to do. I, I've got to figure this out, what, what's going on. And yet he didn't. He stayed the course with faith and he said, you know what? God's got a plan for me. And oh, how God has answered Greg and Renee's prayers and all of our prayers on their behalf. 
all of those things, and we could go on and on and on, but I want to give you one more application. Our elders have given us a vision. And there may be some elements of that vision that may be uncomfortable for us. There may be some elements that might even bring a sense of fear to us. Because it's different than the way that that we've always done things in the past. It feels comfortable to just keep doing the things the way we've always done them. But we can't stay the same. God calls us to greater growth. Let me say that again. God calls us, not our elders, not our shepherds. God is calling us to greater things, to greater spiritual growth. We cannot stay in the same place and say, you know what, I'm good. I'll just wait for the trumpet call and and we'll just say everything's great. No. Faith says I have to move forward because I'm trusting more and more in my Savior. Because if we cannot get out of our comfort zone, then we run the risk of being lukewarm. And Jesus says, being lukewarm is worse than being cold for me. Think about that. If we stand here and say, no, 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 this, this, this sounds, uh, it, it's too different. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm unsure of this. I'm, I'm going to stay right here. We're running the risk of being not on fire for Jesus. But saying, I'll just step back. I'll be in the boat. Peter, you go on and go walk on the water. The question that I ask for all of us is are we of fear or are we of faith? God has a plan. God's will for his kingdom in this area. He has a plan for that. The question for us is will we trust God enough to use us to accomplish his plan in Concord? Are we Or will we allow fear to hold us back? God's purpose is going to be accomplished in this area. And that means that we don't have to fear. We don't have to be, well, wait a minute, I'm unsure of this. God says, all you have to do is trust me, ask me for guidance, and I will bring this about. but that also means God's will will be accomplished. The question is, is God going to use us? Or will we step back such that he has to use somebody else? You see, when we trust, God is not only glorified, but we then experience something that goes beyond walking on water that goes beyond the fears of this world, and even Satan himself cannot hinder it. So I ask you this morning, where are you in your walk with God? Are you of fear, or are you of faith? Some of us may be right there between both. We're saying, I, I've, got, I've still got some fear, but I've got some faith. That's okay. The answer to that is, though, you can't stay right there with faith. Don't let it take up residence in your life. Move forward in faith. Because it is only knowing God and being his child that we overcome fear. So I ask you this morning, are you of faith or are you of fear? God's call is to you. If we can help you in any way to become his child or to just pray for you, won't you come?
as together we stand and sing.